Well, once again, it's time for our regular look into the update of what's going on in Stormont. And for those of you who want the quick TDLR, um, nothing's changed. <laughs> Nothing has indeed happened. But also trying to catch people up who might not be keeping up with this or might have missed stuff going on in this, allow me to give you, of course, the quick TDLR. And bear in mind, this is going to be a very quick TDLR, trying to actually explain this whole situation itself, as I've done on a couple of times, is an entire video itself. So I do apologize if I miss things or I don't go into depth in some of these things. Like I say, I am just trying to catch people up to, we can explain, well, the nothingness that is essentially going on here. <laughs> It's a bizarre situation to say you've got to have at least this much backstory and knowledge to explain nothing that is currently happening. <laughs> but that's the current situation in Northern Ireland. And I've said this numerous times. It is unfair for the DUP to be holding uh, the government of Northern Ireland to complete nothingness, to not be in engaging in it at this time where there is a cost of living crisis, you've got an energy crisis, and all sorts of stuff that they could be helping with the people of Northern Ireland to help solve their problems, and yet they are refusing to go in to Northern Ireland. So, how did we get to this situation? Like I say, this is a very quick, brief overview, so I will be missing and skipping over things, so do excuse me if you know there is deeper stuff going on, but we have to, like I say. That is an entire video onto itself. But the quick TDLR, of course, is back in 2016, the Brexiteers whipped up the DUP and, of course, the Unionists into the idea that they could vote for Brexit and ultimately stop what they saw or what they perceived as unification by stealth. They were whipped up into a frenzy and voted for it. And there was talk in the DUP of these glorious street parties that would occur upon Brexit Day happening. Those, of course, would not occur. And of course, you then get the chaos of Theresa May having a general election, having to be propped up by the DUP, having to even bribe the DUP with more money to ensure that was going on. Theresa May put forward the idea of the Irish backstop, but the DUP did not like the idea that they were stopping Brexit for the entire rest of the country because of well, Northern Ireland's very unique situation. They, of course, rebelled, overthrew Theresa May for a deal which they said at the time they did not want to then go on to later to accept, although, be it very briefly, one of which they were accepting, then they did not accept, and then they continued to not accept. And then, of course, you got Boris Johnson forcing through his whole plan. The DUP did not like it, and have since well, been refusing to go into power sharing, of course, in Stormont. There is also the added situation that they are now no longer the biggest party in Northern Ireland, so they were no longer sort of the first speaker position. They are now second speaker position. So there is a lot of loss in in sort of in that area as to regards of that going on as well. Needless to say, this whole situation is a mess, and the Windsor framework touted by Rishi Sunak as a solution to this idea, that this was going to be the thing that not only fixed the Northern Irish um, sea border situation, and in some ways, yes, it has helped in those regards, but it did not do the big thing and it was named for being the Windsor framework to help get the, the, the DUP back into power sharing. That has not happened. And now, of course, we are still where we were <laughs> from that point on. Nothing has changed still. But you have now the DUP calling out the government where you've got Steve Baker, the man who is, well, responsible for egging on the DUP to betray Theresa May. And bear in mind, Theresa May came out very recently and said that her Brexit deal would have been far better for the UK. And to be honest, 
she does bear somewhat of a point. Uh, her Brexit deal would be a damn sight better than at least the nonsense oven-ready deal that we got from Boris Johnson. The Northern Irish backstop would have been a big solution to this problem. It would not have had a, a, a land border, because you can't have one between uh, the Irish Republic and, of course, Northern Ireland. You can't have that because, of course, Good Friday Agreement. And the number one reason why the DUP still refuse to take um, and go back to office is, of course, the sea border. They are absolutely ideologically opposed to that very idea. We've discussed this time and time again whenever it comes to this. So long as that sea border remains, they are not going to go back. And they, they have said that repeatedly, time and time again. And yet, it's like our government just does not listen. It just does not pay attention. It thinks that they can somehow, you know, coax the DUP back into Stormont. But no, they are not going to go back at all. As long as that Irish sea border is there, they ain't interested. They ain't going back. And they've been calling to try and get these promises to get rid of that Irish sea border uh, implemented by Rishi Sunak. Well, you've got Steve Baker coming out and saying, yeah, these negotiations to get Stormont up and working again, yeah, they're great. They're going absolutely fantastic. And then the DUP has to come out and say, uh, actually, no, these negotiations are going absolutely nowhere. And then you get Leo Varadkar, the, uh, the Irish Taoiseach, come out and say, oh, actually, these negotiations are progressing at a snail's pace. And in what must be the peak of, of, of bizarre... <laughs> um, that's going on, especially when it comes to the whole um, Irish political um, stuff. You have the DUP agreeing with Leo Varadkar saying, yeah, I actually agree with his assessment of how these talks are going. They are progressing at a snail's pace. So that is where we are. Um, nothing has happened Nothing has changed except the DUP are now having to come out and call the government out over the fact that, hey, you're saying that there's this significant progress that has happened. Um, no, no progress has been made. Nothing has changed. And you get the DUP agreeing with a statement via, you know, from Leo Varadkar, the uh, the Irish Prime Minister or the Taoiseach, as he's is called over there, um, saying, yeah, it's going at a snail's pace. Needless to say, they're not going to go back into Stormont anytime soon. And I said at the beginning, I think that's unfair, um, especially for the people in Northern Ireland, not to have a government at this time where there's so many problems that need solving, and yet you have no government able to to govern, <laughs> essentially. Um, it, it just goes to show you the, the continuing big problem that Brexit caused in Northern Ireland. And yet, once again, I would like to remind you, of course, the infamous words of Kate Hoey, who came out and said, oh, there's going to be no problem with Northern Ireland. Don't worry about it. So, as always, thank you very much for watching. And of course, as always, uh, please do remember to click on the like, share, and subscribe button. And of course, down below, there are links to my Patreon page and a one-off station link called Buy Me Coffee, where you can well buy me coffee. And of course, as always, we'll see you all next time.